Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. Visual programming has become popular in a lot of different streams in computer science. Take web development for an example. There are a lot of tools, for example, like Webflow, that makes everybody design a web page or website. But that has not been the case with machine learning or data science. There are some tools that are available, but those tools are extremely expensive. Take IBM SPSS for an example. Not everybody who wants to learn machine learning can use it or to enter into the field. So I believe visual programming is really, really helpful for people who want to enter. So it, it removes the entry barrier by um, just letting you play with a, li a, li a little bit of cards or tools where you can actually, you know, create something that otherwise you could do only with uh, a programming language. I'm not trying to say that visual programming is going to replace uh, every single data scientist sitting in front of laptop today. But what I'm trying to say is that visual programming is really helpful if you're going to teach somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience something new. And that is especially useful in terms of machine learning because data is everywhere. And the more number of people who understand how to play with the data mean uh, that you can get more insights, you can build more models and you can, you know, contribute to a lot of good things. This tool that we are going to see in this video, which is called Cobra.dev is going to be extremely helpful. Cobra.dev is a very new tool. It's currently in beta. You can actually see that. So Cobra.dev is a visual programming language or platform for machine learning. And to say that this is actually developed by 16 year olds. I read it on some, I think, Hacker News forum that um, you can now understand that how much thought they must have put together in developing this tool that could be, you know, that is uh, to help somebody who has never programmed or done machine learning before. So I assume that this tool is going to be extremely helpful for people who are going to start with machine learning. This is currently supported by Ripple Adventures. So that's where I got to know, get started with uh, how to use Cobra.dev. So there is a non-boarding document uh, that the team has put together. You can definitely go and check it out. But I think my, my um, if you ask me, a visual programming tool is supposed to be very intuitive. So let's get started and then see how to do things uh, on the go. So I'm going to click try now. Uh, so once you land on cobra.dev, you have to click try now, click try now. And then uh, the good thing is I should definitely appreciate the creators of cobra.dev to let us use the tool without uh, having to create an account. Definitely there is there is an advantage if you create an account uh, where you can, you know, save your state, um, your pending work, all these things. But, uh, you know, sometimes if I want to just simply demo or try the facility feature of a tool, I don't have to necessarily create an account. I really appreciate them um, for uh, for giving giving us an opportunity to try out the tool without having to create an account. So let's try without an account and you get this interface. So this is where you give the project. So I can say one little coder uh, demo. Okay, that's a project. You can save it if you want, uh, if you have an uh, account and this is to create a new project. So at this point, you can see uh, how does it look, the interface. Uh, so on the left hand side here, you actually see uh, which is this place. So this place is where your data visualization up, uh, appear. And this place is where you upload your file and they've got a couple of tutorials as well. And this part, this part is where you actually code the visual programming environment. And this part is where you see your outputs. And if you are not familiar with this interface, this interface is very popular. Uh, it's quite popular uh, in terms of uh, kids programming. Uh, which is uh, Scratch. So Scratch is a kids programming language. It's I think probably developed by MIT. So where you have a very similar interface where you have a bunch of cards you connect it together like jigsaw puzzle and then you get something done. So Scratch. So if you have a kid uh, try out Scratch. Uh, I have a video about Scratch Junior. You should definitely check it out like if you want to you know see that side of the world. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the description. And also, if you want to teach data principles, like uh, let's say tidy principle is one of the concepts that um, a lot of R programmers like. If you want to teach tidy principle, there is a very similar application like this called uh, tidy blocks. Uh, I have a video about that as well. I link it that. So all these applications are developed on a platform that Google has developed a JavaScript framework called Blockly. So if you have not heard about Blockly, you should definitely check out about Blockly. Blockly is a javascript framework um, that uh, helps anybody to create uh, applications like this so like a uh, visual programming so you can see um, like a uh, google blockly it's uh, yeah you can you can actually see uh, like blockly so this is this is simply how people develop these kind of tools so if you want to create something like this for your own domain you should look at blockly 
So now all the meta information is finished. Let's actually get started with building something that can be meaningful. So the first thing is you can um, either create a new data frame here or you can upload a data frame. I'm going to upload a data frame. So click up, file upload and then upload a data frame. And at this point, you can see that uh, data, once the data frame is uploaded, it's giving you a couple of cues on what you should do. So the first thing that you should be doing is you need to create a variable for the data frame. So I'm going here to the variable and then saying create variable and then saying my variable name is going to be let's say df. Uh, I think this is the default variable name a lot of people would probably use. So now take df and then say set df to and what do you want to set it to? You want to set it to the CSV file that you're reading. So my CSV file name is this and I'm going to read that as my data frame df. And after that, I want to extract the column names from this. Like those are going to be my new variables. Go to variable, create a new variable and you can see what are the column names available. So there are two column names. One is years experience. The second one is um, salary. So I'm going to say experience, create a variable exp and get it here. And then I'm going to say from the column years, I think I'll better copy it. Yeah, from DF. DF, yeah. And then the next thing is I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, I can I can go here, create a new variable. I can say salary and then say copy the salary, paste it here. And you, you can actually see. So when we are doing this, if uh, the card that you are trying to place, the jigsaw puzzle that you are trying to place is faded out, that actually means that it is not in the right position. So if I remove this, you can see it's faded out. It's not in the right position. But if I link it and it gives you a very small, you know, uh, like a tickle sound where it says like you're fitting the card inside. So I'm going to take this and you can see this shape here and this one, like uh, if I have to show you actually, you can see this getting connected with this. You can actually see that. So I'm putting it here and then saying get the data, get the column. And then say salary, I think salary is the column name. Let me just quickly check salary from DF, DF, yeah. So now we have three variables here, DF, experience, exp, and salary. Uh, these are the three columns that we have, uh, like three variables that we have got. Let's quickly make a plot. Let's start with making a plot. I'm going to make a plot. So I, I'm going to the plot section and taking this and then adding a plot. And then let's say I want to make a scatter plot. So once I come here, I have an option to select all these plots, bar chart, box plot, pie. If I select box, I can do that. I'm going to start with the scatter plot. Then I want to see the correlation or relation between years experience and salary, which usually is assumed to be um, positively correlated. I'm going to go to the variable section. I have four variables here. I'm going to say I want um, experience and then as my X, go to variable and then say salary as my Y. So at this point, we have something that is complete. So let's run this. Okay. Go to the plot. And uh, then I think probably I have to show the plot. Let me quickly see. Okay, I think we can actually uh, set the plot title. Let's set the plot title. Oh yeah, we have got the plot. So let's hit the plot title, which is um, which is a uh, salary versus um, experience in years. And uh, your series title, like if you want series title, you can actually see otherwise you can leave it and then let's run it. And you can see salary versus and you can see this, this is like a plotly interface uh, quite popular for Python programmers. So you can actually see that we have made a plot scatter plot and we can see that in real time like you can actually see the plot so if you do not watch scatter plot let's say you want um, you want a while in plot you can see that and then say run and then you can see a while in plot like in in terms of while in plot you actually don't need um, you don't need a y variable so let's see if it runs yes you can or you can actually see and control z works i just did control z and it works so i'm deleting this and then say salary so you can see a while in plot or if you want a box plot sorry what did i do oh i did bar plot box plot and you can see or if you want you can actually do a histogram you can see a histogram uh, if you want so you can do all these things like whatever plot you want 
um, pie chart, uh, sorry, uh, box plot. Oops, let me know. Yeah, box plot, whatever chart you want, you can actually do it. But uh, we said that this is going to be about machine learning. So it's not only about data visualization. So what we are going to do now is, let's build a very simple machine learning. So I'm deleting the cards. And then I'm going to see within machine learning, what do we want to do? So let's say like I want to do a simple linear regression. So I'm going to go to linear regression and then take the linear regression um, model. Does it fit anywhere? It doesn't fit anywhere because uh, we have not done the right thing. So we have to go to the linear regression and see which one fits with this thing. So the first one is take fit linear regression model. Take that here and then say fit model. Okay, uh, that's a model name. That's the object name and then go back and then say linear regression and uh, you can like now you can actually say the model and this is your input for prediction but what you want to actually do is you want to uh, predict so let me quickly see or I can take some example from their help so you can see that they have data in place then you have to set model okay uh, I'm sorry I forgot that so go here say set model to this one okay and that goes here okay so now set model to this and x is your training data which is our experience so from experience we are trying to predict y so go to experience and then add it here go to salary and add it here and then we are trying to fit the model and when we run it let's see what do we get as an output so i think um we can say okay let's do input as well after we fit the model set 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 let's go set oh, i have to probably create a new variable i think so yeah so you can create a print like this so let's have a look at it so it says create print create text with uh, something so what we can do is go to text print take print here and then add it here and then say maybe i want to i don't want that I, i'm just so when you look at the data you have got uh, years of experience like this 5.3 5.9 so let's try something around 5 as our input okay 5 is there so let's run this and when you run this this is the output that you get around 73000 and if you go you can actually see uh, it takes around 73000 here so how this um, platform can help somebody without any programming knowledge to get started with uh, machine learning um, like where you explain somebody oh go build a logistic regression so they don't have to necessarily you know learn r or python but i am not again saying that you can survive or get a job as a data scientist or practice as a data scientist without programming knowledge but you can actually do this thing which is um, which is uh, reduce the entry barrier for anybody and they have got a very nice documentation you can see like they have got a very beautiful documentation where you can learn how to do a bunch of things but i think if you watch this video this should be good enough for you to learn a, like learn how to do things there are a couple of other things you where you don't have to even do machine learning necessarily you can do basic logics loops um, simple math and uh, like you have functions as well like simple functions and you have got uh, text related things um, you know changing from lowercase to uppercase and then when you create a list you can actually see what all like for example in data frame you have an option to create list from the column and uh, now you can actually process those lists here so you can do iteration all those things and uh, you know you have like color option i don't know why would you use color option but these are the options that are available uh, again this is currently in beta you can do a lot of things with this and i wish this team really good luck um, they are very young and this kind of tool is really essential in market where um, it doesn't like it's a free tool right now right so a tool like spss or alteryx would charge a lot of money but again i understand there's a purpose for them but for somebody who wants to learn machine learning and um, programming in terms of machine learning this is definitely a good um, entry point and that should uh, that should be a great thing and uh, thanks to repelit ventures um uh, for uh, for sponsoring such a like i think for um, for supporting such a product 
and uh, there, there are a lot of uh, exciting things with Interpol Adventures. You should definitely check it out. Uh, like to be to be like transparent, this video is not sponsored by either of these products. These are the products that I really look uh, up to. So that's uh, that's the reason I have given shout out to. If you enjoy this video, please um, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And also let me know on Twitter. And also give these developers a shout out on Twitter or um, LinkedIn or whatever platform that you are. Go to Cobra.dev and then you know give yourself a try take care of yourself stay safe